This is Barb with Lost and Floss. This video is primarily about cross stitch and a few other things thrown in. So today is Mon no, yeah, Monday, July 24th, 2023. It's my grandson's birthday. Um, so that's exciting. Um, they're out of town, so we won't be celebrating today with them. But, um, yeah, I have a lot to share with you and not a lot of time. So I think we're going to jump right in. I finally figured out, instead of um, trying to cram all my stuff, like, right around me, I have a staging area on the dining room. Room table, and I'm just gonna like stop and start segments so that I don't have to have like everything all over the place and you know, you spending a bulk of time looking at the top of my head as I'm rummaging around. Well, anyways, um, so as I mentioned, any newcomers, um, welcome to the channel. I'm Barb, and um, I love to cross stitch. <laughs> <laughs> and many people have been with me for quite a while and um, know that when this channel started, um, started with my best friend Leanne and unfortunately lost her like three and a half years ago, um, but have morphed into doing something to honor her every day and not only her, but um, other special friendships people may have. And that's, um, I'm gonna talk about this now so I don't forget, but on August 24th, which was her birthday, um, or is her birthday, was her birthday, um, we've been, get, our stitch group's been gathering together and we um, get a spot that we can have food and just spend the whole day into the evening stitching and um, just having fellowship and great times. So um, anyways, on that day, I encourage you to start a new piece. It can be anything. And um, if you're on Instagram, use the hashtag Leanne's Legacy. I'll include that in the show notes so you know how to spell Leanne. Because it's one of those names that there's a lot of different variations depending on um, who you knew with that name. But anyways, um, and it's not just, it's really beyond her as well. Um, it's a, the whole legacy of of special friendships in our life and what an impact um, those people have had on our lives and continue to have on our lives long after they're gone. So I encourage you to um, join in the fun and um, I haven't decided yet what I'm stitching, but um, I don't know. Last year I chose a Blackbird Fall piece. I've done Winter Rose Manor. And um, that brings me to uh, this one. This was my, for the second year, I started All Joys for Thine. And I decided I need to get this done before August 24th. And I'm getting getting pretty far on it. Um, I'm stitching this on Heartland by Picture This Plus 36 count using all the called for colors and I just love it. I'm getting really pretty far. I, I've saved the words because I figure you know that's pretty easy stitching but um, I'm getting more and more to not be intimidated by this kind of a, a piece. And I can see how people get drawn to just stitching samplers because it's not full coverage. You can break it down into manageable little bits. And um, it's just rather enjoyable. So anyways, that is my Leanne's legacy um, from two years ago. And so 
I need to get that wrapped up because I'm really trying to stay current on finishing and as well as like fully finishing those pieces. Um, yeah, so uh, I encourage you to join us on that day. Um, you don't have to be with anyone. You can just start all on your own and um, please let's see how many people we can get to start something. It'll be fun. And um, don't forget to use the hashtag Leanne's Legacy when you post on Instagram on that day. And if you can't start on that day, just start whenever and uh, use the hashtag. Uh, another piece I've put a little bit of work into is Plum Street Samplers this happy morning. And this was a kit I bought at Country Sampler in Spring Green, Wisconsin. And I'm getting, I'm getting close to having that big, big, big structure done. But the more I stitch on this, the more I want to stitch on it. It's a lot of stitching. But um, yeah, I, I'm loving it and I can't wait to get to some of the, you know, what, once that's done, I don't know if I'll work on my border. I mean, the grass has a lot of coverage to it. I'll probably do those trees and that star, the urn, and then work my way maybe to the border and then the grass. I don't know. We'll see. It'll be a mystery, right? <laughs> but I'm um, very, very pleased with how that's turning out. So I did, I was able to wrap up all my patriotic except for one piece. And that's the infamous American Primitives by Teresa Kogut. And I thought I was so smart just stitching it on Aztec Red 36 count so I could eliminate all the red. But it's still a lot of stitching. And I'm like looking at it and I'm definitely making some changes. Like I don't want those sheep. So I think I'm gonna do stars there. I don't want the checkerboard and I'm not so sure about why why is there a rabbit on a skateboard is it a skateboard is it like a little wagon i'm not sure what he is but i don't know what i'm going to do with that yet <laughs> there was some discussion at our last stitch group but uh, although he is a cute rabbit i don't know and then i'm i might just instead of america American primitives. I might just do America um, and then maybe three stars underneath that instead. Like maybe move it down a little bit. Well, that'll be interesting. <laughs> but um, I this is my oldest unfinished piece and I will get this done. Not this year, obviously, because I think I am putting it away. But you can even see like it's really starting to take shape. And I thought this was a regular flag, but it's a structure. So it's like maybe a little barn with, uh, with the flag on the side. But I think it's really cute and I will finish it. Because it just gives you a sense of satisfaction when you do. Um, <laughs> I had quite a blunder in my um, Prairie Schooler Santa 2023 giveaway. Well, I mean, it was no crisis, but I accidentally um, didn't see the first winner's uh, reply to me. And so then I did a speed round and gave it to someone else. Well, luckily I had bought two charts because I knew I wanted to give one away and I wanted to stitch one. And um, so I sent both both the charts off and I thought, well, next time I'm at a stitchy shop or ordering, I'll just 
order another one for myself. And then I, I happened to mention to Lisa from our stitching group um, that I had done such a stupid thing. And she's like, well, I'm almost done stitching mine. I'll give you it. So thank you, Lisa. So I will be starting this. We're going to um, Traverse City for a wedding. So I think I'm uh, going to start that when I'm in Traverse City. Since I had kind of a blunder with my other <laughs> other ones. Um, so I'm stitching these one over one. I believe this is 24 count vintage country mocha. But you know, once you start getting going on them, this is the 2010 Santa. I love this one, little skiing guy. So, got a pretty good start on him. There's not, I mean, obviously, there's not a lot of color changes going there. So, I should be able to get this one wrapped up for Christmas this year. So, that if I do, plus the new one for this year, that'll mean completing three for this year. So, maybe I can sneak a fourth one in. I don't know. Then this one I picked back up. It was hard for me to put this down for a while. But this is the 2006 limited edition Dear Santa by Prairie Schooler. And I'm stitching this on 28 count raw natural cashel with bandana, desert mesquite, black canyon, and bamboo. So not a lot of colors which makes it a fun, easy stitch. So I've got Santa almost done. And my goal, I have one of these series done. My goal is to have four of them because I have a spot in my kitchen that they'll fit perfectly. So I'd like to get him done this year. And I think that's, that's doable. I mean, with so few colors, blocks of colors, it goes pretty fast. Love that one. And now we're moving on to Needlework by Kathy Barrick. And I've always loved this one. Just very simple. And I'm stitching this on... 40 count something or other. This was before I started my new system. So I apologize for not knowing, but um, I'm using silks, but not the call for silks. And I messed up on the word needle. So I had to frog that out and now I'm just filling in the black. But I feel once I get that done, it'll be just like cruising time. Cause that's, I mean, you know, to do those stars, you can just, it's so repetitive. You'll just keep whipping those out. Which is great. So back when we went to StitchCon, Leanne bought the chart for Christmas Garden and um, started stitching this. She had mostly the bottom done and the border, I don't think she had all the berries, but I've moved on to complete the top part. So I've been looking this over and I think I'm almost there. You know, like I kept, I took a picture on my phone, someone suggested and, um, you know, then it is easier to see things you've missed, but I need to put the personalizing in. Um, I think I'm going to do both her initials and mine and kind of non-standard for the middle initial, I'll use our 
maiden names because that's what we were when we met and I don't know maybe I, I'm thinking maybe the dates of our friendship not really sure yet but I'll figure it out so I'm really excited that that was done and I should have that done for Christmas this year and then this was when Leanne had all kitted up and never stitched. Farmhouse Christmas by Little House Needleworks, Grandma's Quilt. And I'm not gonna make an ornament out of it. I'm just gonna make a little everyday pillow. But I'm using the Cloud for Colors and stitching this two over two on 30 count portobello linen. And this one I'm almost done with too. If I wouldn't have had to rip out almost half a border I might have been done with it but um I forgot to put the the white border around and I was counting off the black border and I got to the middle and I'm like hey that doesn't match up so um yeah so that is the last of my whips I mentioned in my last video that I was going to start all this patriotic stuff and you know what that didn't happen but that's okay um I, you know like when you get pumped up about old projects it's kind of nice because it's easy to start new things for, well it's not so easy to start new things for me I don't really like the starting process so once I get into it though that's when I get excited. But um, there's there's a number of patriotic things I want to stitch, but it's kind of nice like being down to one and probably only filing that one away in my rotation. Uh, so basically I didn't start anything new this this um, from my last video to this one, but um, mostly because I've been doing quite a bit of finishing, um, I made, if you haven't seen it and you have use of it, I made a video on how I finish my stockings. Um, my tripod um, leg is a little broken and so it's kind of a, well, I gave myself a D I think, but somebody gave me an A plus and I say thank you. Um, but, I think it's broken down into simplistic ways to make anyone who can sew a straight line feel like they can do this. Um, it really is not all that complicated when you you see the steps. And I, when I um, did my first like, you know, this, the stockings I had done earlier in my stitching um, journey, I they weren't as, as complicated. They were more, you know, a motif here, 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 um, not full coverage. Not that, that it wasn't made me nervous to, to um, you know, like finish them, but when you spend years stitching on one, it's a whole different story. <laughs> so I have to say the biggest um, thing of comfort when I am starting to finish them is putting the SF 101 on the back <laughs> because I feel like it then just becomes a regular thing instead of like this heirloom and you know I can think of it in those terms and just go on and uh, finish it up so um, if you need a stocking tutorial you know not not up there with the best but it's it's the way I've done mine for almost 40 years and I think it's easy and you get nice results you know not top of the line well I don't know. Uh, you can see my stocking on show later and you be the judge, okay? So, um, anyways, uh, let's move on to Safe from the Trash because I've been to Goodwill. Okay, not 
not a ton of things, but um, it's always fun to get something new. So for 99 cents, I got this little tart pan, which, you know, I, that's a good deal. It doesn't have the removable bottom, but that's okay. And I got this cute fall spreader for 99 cents. So I have such a vast array of fall um, serving pieces and that sort of thing from when I used to have this fall ladies night. So when I see something else, I just can't pass it up. And I think I'm going to, I'm not really sure. These, these must be, let's see. My floss keepers, I suppose you could just wind them around, but I got this whole stack for, I don't know if it was even a dollar. So I was thinking I might even punch holes in them and then I could use, um, use them the way I currently stitch. But I thought, you know, even a nice ring for a buck can't go wrong. And then I bought this America's Best Cross Stitch. I think these were marked down to 50 cents. If This was a different thrift shop, if I remember correctly. But, um, like, I could see this flower motif on a pillow. Thought that was really pretty. But the main reason I bought it was for this. Well, this bunny is kind of cute. I mean, I, would, I wouldn't I would do it in baby colors. I'd do it in more traditional. But um, this is what I bought it for, this heart. And I know I have a piece of red pear. And um, I, I love how it's just tied with the ribbon like that. So I will be doing that this year for Valentine's Day stitchy. Um, then on our trip back from the cabin, we passed by a place, a, a town called Osseo. And if you're familiar to Wisconsin and Osseo, you probably know of Norski's Nook, the pie place. Um, years ago, uh, the, the pie lady was on David Letterman and there's a cookbook and just, you know, a lot of people know who have traveled that way, know of Norski Snook. So I've, I've been trying to, um, be more mindful of, of making the trip, which is maybe about five hours back and forth from home to the cabin, more of a, experience rather than just like rush rush and you know get home in in record time or whatever so i said to my husband let's stop for lunch there and then we could have some pie um so we get there and it's very crowded i mean it was right around noon time and they used to have a, a, a overflow across the street but i don't know that that's open anymore maybe with um you know staffing shortages whatever so they told us it would be about 20 minutes and when we came into town i noticed that there was a quilt shop down the block so i left my husband sitting on the park bench outside and um to the mad dash down to the quilting nook and i wish i had more time to spend there but i managed to find some stuff and i just these these fabrics spoke to me so i bought fat quarters of each i just can see that as a little pillow finishing for something summery next year i don't know what i'm going to use it for but sooner or later something will speak to me and then i found this pumpkin pile um let's see susan gonzalez designs and it was really cute. I, and I love, I love that, um, 
blue-green colored pumpkin. Even in real life, I love those. So I had to get this. And I'm like, I am just, like, I find, like, it just easier to get the kit. Um, oh, you know, looking at it, it's not blue-green. It's gray. <laughs> Hence why there's no, oopsie, that's really, um, It's really, the light is bouncing off. Well, I guess I'm gonna love me some gray pumpkins too. But anyways, I'm, I'm gonna do that this fall. I, I feel like when you have a kit, it just is like so much easier. You just like follow the directions. It looks like what it's supposed to look like. You have what you need. And so um, anyways, I'm gonna be working on that. One more wayward whip. Uh, Colonial Blooms Scarlet House. And I realize I really don't like stitching on dark fabric. I'm using 32 count picture this plus dusk and stitching two over two. And I, I am so totally off. And then there's, <laughs> there's two charts, one light, one dark. And I figured out I was stitching on the light ones. But anyways, I do like how it looks. I really should get out my like light up board so I can see better. But um, yeah, we'll get this one done. And then that moves us into FOs. So I've got several. Um, I finished up JBW Designs French Country Flower Basket. And I'm just was stitching this on a scrap piece of, I think it's 36 count linen and using Emma's Pink by Weeks Dye Work. And this is the one I did not leave myself very much room, but it'll be fine. I'll be able to finish it. And this is what I'm thinking for the backing. I think that'll look good. It picks up. I hope it'll look good. So I just wanted something simple and something I had so I could just finish it up. And then I'm excited about having these done and I sure hope they're going to look like what I'm envisioning. So these are Annie B Folk Art um, Red Work Pairs. And my vision was to do them three different sizes. So I picked out um, three different counts of fabric or linen. Um, this one, I stitched one over two and it's 36 count Aztec red. And I used Weeks Sand. And this one is a uh, scrap of 28 count vintage metal rue. And I use Belle Soie Sister Scarlet. Nice variation in there. And then my last piece is Copper Vintage Lakeside Linens um, 32 count. And what did I use for this? Hmm. Cherry cobbler. It's really, the fabric has more of a pinky tone, more so than copper. So, this is what I'm envisioning. I can hold them all up, but you can kind of see. And I think that's going to look really kind of cool. And Lisa gave me these backing fabrics she had used for hers. And 
It's a French country or what is it? French general. Love that. And so, oopsie. I think that one's going to be perfect for this one. And then these two, this polka dot has like more of a, some pink tones in it. And so I'm pretty sure that's, this is the one I should use for those two. But I hope that's going to look good. I think it will. I think, you know, once I have it cut out and can kind of just put um, the fabric more closer to the stitch pieces themselves, I'll be able to tell if that's a go. But excited to get those finished. I'm not sure exactly when that's going to happen, but I'll keep working on it. There's just been so much going on lately. We had, um, well, I think it was before 4th of July that I recorded last. And so, you know, there were festivities going on with the 4th. We went to, um, our friend has a downtown condo. And so he had a firework party and I think he's on like the 10th floor. It was so awesome because there was a I don't know what what the moon the name for it even was but it it rose like right in the center of the fireworks and it was that orangey color to begin with and it was like the orange moon and and at first it was kind of in the clouds a little bit and somebody's like look at the moon and um and then it just I don't know what was more magnificent. I think, you know, it truly is a testament to the beauty of nature because you have this elaborate display of fireworks going on and yet the moon is what was really capturing the moment. I mean, it was so awesome. And then the other thing, there's like maybe a floor to down and over. So like lots of people are out on the the balconies, larger balconies, and this older gentleman, and he's done this another time, saying, um, God bless America. I mean, it was, it's just like so moving and, and other people are joining in and I, it, it was really cool. So, um, did that and just, it was kind of a low key holiday, no, nothing too exciting going on, but got out and did some riding. And then um, Harley Fest, Harley Davidson is in Milwaukee. And so every, up until now, every five years, they have this big to do where the dealerships have, you know, a couple day parties at their sites and have bands and food and music and well, bands and music I guess that's the same but um just a lot to do and so um we you know it was hot and sunny so we went to a couple different dealerships different days took a beautiful ride north along the lake up to Sheboygan and then tried to like stay off the main main roads and rather take the as close to the um the lake as we could stay which was you know a lot of navigating back and forth but um so that was a lot of fun and then down at the big veterans park they had the Foo Fighters and a bunch of other bands and so um, we went down there for that, and that was especially fun because our son and girlfriend um, came in from out of town, and um, he was there with a bunch of his friends that we know well. And so, you know, we were just kind of coming to say hi and then <laughs> ended up hanging out with them. But um, so that, that was a lot of fun, and uh, just, you know, 
Now, now they're talking about making it an annual event, so I don't know how that's going to go, but uh, it, it just was fun. And, um, yeah, I'm trying to think what else has been going on. Oh, I, I have had to get a new, well, I didn't have to, but I wanted to get a new dress for this wedding we're going to in Traverse City. And, um... It's so weird, like I realized how much online ordering I've been doing. And, you know, like to, to go in a fitting room and like try things on, you know, it just, it's kind of nice because like you just eliminate so much of it that, um, I don't know, had I, had I had it arrived in the mail, maybe, would I have settled for it or would I have gone through the effort of sending him back? I'm not sure. But, um, and just even like, I forgot how funny it is to be in the fitting room and listen to like chatter of other people. Like, <laughs> there are these two women in there and when I came out to get different sizes, they, they appear to be like shopping for fancier dresses. And then, one of them said something like, we're going to make really hot mothers, mother of the brides. And then the other one goes, um, mother of the grooms. <laughs> and I'm like, how do you not know that? Like, I don't know. And then, then all of a sudden you hear, look at how this makes my butt look. And I'm, <laughs> I'm like, it was all I could do not just start laughing. So that was pretty funny. And then yesterday I had a 40% off at Kohl's, which I haven't shopped there in ages. And so obviously a lot of other people hadn't either because my husband needed like a um, casual shirt for the trip. And um, so like I said to him, let's take separate cars because I know it'll take me longer than it takes you. And so we did that and when he was leaving, like we put his stuff in the bottom of the cart, like the line was maybe 20 people back. I don't know if everybody came right after church or what it was. Probably a lot of people had 40% off as well. So, um, so then like, I'm like, oh, I need this and I need that and trying things on. I, I put on 7,000 steps inside the store. So like, I kept, you know, like, oh, let's look at tennis shoes. Oh, let's look at this. Let's look at that. And I was there for most of the afternoon, which I did not intend. Well, the next time I walked by the checkout line, there was nobody in line. I'm like, oh, great. You know, when I'm ready to check out, this will be perfect. And then I get to the point where I'm sick of trying things on. Like, I just think I want this shirt, but I'm not sure if it's this size or that size. So I throw both of them in, in my cart and I'm like, I will rather try them on at home in a relaxed manner than like go back in that fitting room again. And so I came home with quite a, quite a few things. And then, you know, like there's certain things the 40% doesn't apply to, which, which I knew, but there were a lot of things that I didn't think it applied to that it did. So that was exciting. But anyways, that was kind of like a waste of a day, but you know, uh, oh, like I, I need to get on to finish things. <laughs> I mean, we only have so much time here, right? For this happy mail that I got, uh, we had our mail stopped because we had been up north and I came back and I'm like, oh, what is this? Um, but a really cute card with a nice note inside. This was from Nancy. She had won the rabbit and the rose chart and um, she sent me this needle book. This is just adorable. I love it. And so thank you so much, Nancy. I mean, I think that is just the cutest thing. And I will make good use of this. So, I mean, how nice is that? <laughs> like, you know, those out of the blue type things are always so exciting and you know i so appreciate it um then last video i showed uh this bend creek piece flag 1884 i think it is and i had it 
in this awful star blasted <laughs> frame. And like the last couple of years I've looked at it and th thought, oh, I should do something different. Well, I had to resize the frame. I wish I would have left a little bit more margin on it, but it is infinites better than what it was. And I look at this and I think, I've really only been stitching again for five years and finishing for five years. And it does kind of blow my mind, you know, because it seems like now I'm so familiar with, like, I, it doesn't intimidate me nearly as much as it did years ago. So speaking of finishes, I've got this Manny Flag of Liberty pillow that I stitched on 36 count um, Plum R and R Plum Street blend, and I left off the wording because I didn't want it, and I just made it into a cute little pillow. This this is more like a I don't know. It was leftover binding I had from this little tabletop quilt thing I made. And so I'm like, oh, I should try just sewing that on. So I did. And then I just did like kind of a chambray edge and then some brick rack. So very simple, but I think it turned out really cute. And glad that one's done. Um... I don't have the chart here, but I know a lot of you have had this or seen it. It's a Blackbird design. Oh, she's not showing up. There. So top, and then I love this one. It has the alphabet going around, and then this big flag. Oh, I guess that's the alphabet again. But I'm pretty proud of how my stars lined up. I'm like, oh, that's awesome. I just use this kind of print on the bottom. And I mean, that's a tight drum. I, <laughs> I left a little bit too much space on my edges. And so I ended up making some cording. But oops, like that is really not showing up. But I promise she shows up. But I, this is the part I love the most, like right there. That's awesome. So I'm really happy. Like that's another patriotic one in the book. Here is what I did with my blunder. The Scarlet House, Strawberry House. And on the chart, I'm just gonna flash this very quickly. Pink Keep is right there. And so I thought it was part of the pattern when I was stitching until I got to the end. And then it's like, where the heck does this thing fit in? And um, people gave me other stitchers' names who must have thought the same thing because they ended up... Um, so this would be over here and they ended up like continuing the vine down. I think one of them put a year in, but I really didn't want to stitch anymore. So this is what I did. And this could have been a little bit more even, but it's not. So I, I made, I made this into like an envelope and I folded the little back. Yeah, I wish this was like straight down the middle, but it's not. But I think it looks really cute. And then I thought, well, I really could use this sleeve, you know, for other seasons as well. And just, um, just put it on this. So what do you think? Do you like it? I, I'm really happy with it. Like I almost like the back as much as front. Well, you know, I, I, I hope I will never make that mistake again, but it caused me to think outside the box. And I'm like, you know, it's kind of fun to get a different type of uh, finish in. Okay, 
now for the piece de resistance. So, as mentioned, I'm a stocking stitcher for my grandchildren. And so, started with the oldest. These are all gold collections. This is, uh, I stitched this one for my granddaughter, Santa's Journey Stocking. So I've done that one. And then I did Welcome Santa. I did like kind of my own, like I carried the top up a little bit more and made more of a band at the top. And then I did Hol Holiday Glow Stocking. Whoopsie. That one's cute too. And then this last one was Santa's Flight. And here it is. I have like sniblets of stuff on here yet. But I, you know, I stressed out over the backing fabric. But now that I've done it, I'm like, why did I even think that wouldn't look great? So very, very happy to have this one done. And pretty soon I'm going to be starting my son-in-law. So I can't wait to get going on that one. It'll be another, you know, year and a half of stocking and go Barb go and let's not bring up the stocking. Let's bring up the stocking and all those fun hashtags I like to use. So, um, thanks for all your comments, too, on my big box of fiber fill. I really seriously thought that maybe I would film my video <laughs> sitting on the box because it's that big. Um, but I, I had bought a box of fiber fill years and years ago when I was doing crafting. And so I knew about the, you know, if you opened it at the top, it just exploded blows and like you can't believe how much uh fiber fill comes out of the top before you're level with the box again so um i was prepared to cut a hole like in the side towards the bottom and and that works really well it you know like you just have to puncture into one of the bags and grab out a handful at a time so much more manageable way to make it work so um yeah, I think that's that's about it. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I wanted to mention. I don't think so. So, um, yeah, I encourage you once again to join us on August 24th, starting something new for Leanne's Legacy. I'll put that hashtag, as mentioned, in the drop down, as well as my Instagram name and email in case you have any questions about anything I mentioned here. And, you know, I so appreciate you all watching, taking the time to watch. Um, there's just a, you know, it, it's such a different environment than it was like five years ago. And so I really am touched that you take the time to watch. And um, if you're new, thank you. I hope you subscribe, like the video and all that fun stuff. Um, I, this is video 91. Well, there definitely will be a hundred video celebration because that, that's a crazy milestone in my book. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, I guess that's about it. And, um, it's a glorious day here. The smoke is coming back. Uh, the heat is coming back this week in a vengeance. I'm not overly excited about my yard. I, I thought this was going to be the year the way I've been trying to take care of things that it was going to be like awesome, like awesome. And I've really been kind of sad that with spending so much time like fertilizing and all that kind of stuff, 
I, I don't know that it even looks as good as some other years. Like I'm, I'm always battling the pests. Like I had some little worm that was eating my stuff off at the base and all of a sudden you had this nice impatient plant and then it's like down to nothing and it's like, oh, whatever. And now the Asian beetles have started on our hardy hibiscus. So I'm out there picking them off, which is gross, but I, I find that the best way to just deal with them and then drop them in a little jar of soapy water and they're gone. <laughs> so, but they can cause such destruction. And then while we were up north, I had bought a beautiful new flax plant last year that was like this hot pink color and it was just blooming before we left and came back and I forgot to do the deer off in the garden before we left and they did leave me one stem but the others must have been tasty because they're all gone and um haven't had too many slug issues this year but I think maybe that's due to I had the roly polies early and so I was using the diatinaceous earth and I think that uh not to be mean sounding but it it scratches their tummies so then they dehydrate and they don't eat my plants so um you know someday someday I will have the garden of my dreams in the meantime I'll just keep working on it and it's hard because with going back and forth from up north, like I'll just get things looking great here. And then you come home and um, I have some of those little watering bulbs, but you know, if it's too hot in there, we had so much dry spell, things just, just didn't go as planned. And so I was out there yesterday and I'm like, you know how things get a little bit leggy at this time of year. And I'm like, I'm just cutting them all back because they don't look like my vision. And you know, like they still have flowers, but like a lot of the long tra trailing stuff, I'm like, it'll look great in August, but you know, right now, not so much. So, um, I don't know what kind of pictures I'll even have to show gardening at the end, but oh well. <laughs> well, okay. So now I've I've really rambled on for quite a bit. And um yeah, I I'm glad this video well, I guess I have more than one video to plug together. But hopefully it won't be too long. And um yeah, thank you for watching. I I so appreciate it. And I hope you're having as much fun stitching as I am. And that you continue to fill the world with love. We'll see you probably in a couple weeks. Maybe after uh, Leanne's Legacy. I'll probably have stuff to show. So, um, you know... Uh, subscribe and set the bell so you know when I record because if nothing else, I'm sporadic. So thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.